We have got four fantastic games on tap for this weekend. It is the NFL's divisional round. We're going to break down all four games and let you know where we are seeing value in those games over at FanDuel Sportsbook by bringing on Ryan Williams and getting his read on this week's games. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Stonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire.com. Joined here, as mentioned, by Ryan on Twitter at Ryan Alexander underscore W Ryan. We are on to the divisional round for pretty fun games on tap for this weekend. How you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. He's trying to get through it. Um, it's just, we're, we're having a lot of fun here uh, getting geared up for the divisional round. So I'm excited to get after it with you and uh, hopefully get a better card than I had for wild card weekend. It wasn't that bad, though, honestly. Like, you know, you had some good hits in there. Um, you know, I think there were some things that worked against you. Uh, this, that, you know, things I was in the Bucks as well. So uh, that obviously was not a super fun ride. But I think overall, it could have been a lot worse. And I think that this week, honestly, for me, I don't have a lot on this card. So I'm going to have to pick your brain to get your read on what is actually good across this slate. So I've only got a couple of best plays so far. I'm pretty likely to keep it that way not forcing stuff in where there's not actually value so i'm gonna pick your brain ryan get your read on this slate and let uh hopefully let the listeners know uh where some good bets can be found for this weekend before we dig into these games though, i want to remind you to make sure you are subscribed to the covering the spread podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts because we post these shows and sometimes numbers move like recorded the tuesday uh divisional round first look and the Bengals bills total moved down like two points, like almost right away. So we want to make sure you get these shows right as they're posted to do that. Make sure you are subscribed to covering the spread wherever you get your podcast. Also check us out over on the FanDuel YouTube page, subscribe, both those places, get these shows as they go live, get your bets in. And uh, while you're there, if you like what you hear, leave us a rating review as well on the DFS side of things. The NFL Saturday million is now live on FanDuel. Put your NFL knowledge to the test and create your best nine player roster while staying under the salary cap. Then use FanDuel's live scoring feature. You can follow along as you compete for your share of $1 million in prizes with first place, taking home $200,000 all for just a $5 entry fee. Saturday is coming quickly. So head to FanDuel.com and enter your lineups today. Eligibility restrictions apply. Go to FanDuel.com or download the FanDuel app for more details. Now, before we dig into the actual games this week, Ryan, I want to talk to you about uh, the Chiefs and the Eagles coming off their buys this week. And other teams haven't had buys in a pretty long time. So how much does how much of a bump do those two teams get coming off a buy entering the divisional round? Oh, huge, huge bump, Jim. They get a huge bump. And there's a reason why there's only one team per conference now um, that gets to have this buy, right? Is because it is so vaunted. And, you know, just having that home playoff game, whether you're able to, you know, kind of get rest because you kind of know you're in that position, uh, having the one seed for a little bit. So week 18 is kind of a little bit different, especially for a team like the Eagles, right? The Eagles have been able to get a little bit healthy. Um, I know they struggled towards the end of the season. Um, but now, you know, you've had that buy um, and, you know, are playing a team technically on short rest because uh, the Giants played on Sunday night or Sunday, you know, later on. So uh, absolutely, you know, love that for for them. And then the Chiefs, you know, we, the, the biggest thing about the Chiefs is like Andy Reid off of a bye, right? So like them coming out and being able to host in the divisional round, not playing in the wild card, like that's been money for them uh, in, you know, the Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes tenure together. Um, and with them, you know, as well, just kind of being able to recharge the batteries and, and gear up for for this game. So, you know, it's it, there's a reason why, you know, these one seeds are pretty successful um, overall when they when they get this by going into the divisional round. And uh, I think both of them are in a position to uh, to move on to the next round. You mentioned the Andy Reid off a of buy thing, which I always find fascinating because he seems almost a little bit too galaxy brainy. You think that he might outthink himself if he had too much time. Um, like that's always been my right. impression because like you watch the Chiefs in the red zone. It is the most galaxy brain nonsense you've ever seen. And it usually works. But like I feel like for him, it's almost counterintuitive how good they are off a of buy because you think like, OK, 
a little bit too much time for Andy to get his to get his schemes cooking, and they might go a little bit awry. But as you said, they've been very good, um, and they've got the rest. Uh, both those teams pretty healthy for the most part. Obviously, it seems like Michael Harvin's probably going to sit for the Chiefs, but getting Sky Moore back for this week, defense looks healthy. Eagles get Jalen Hurts next week, and I think those things do matter quite a bit. So let's start things off here by talking about that Andy Reid team and talk about the Jaguars at the Chiefs. The Chiefs are eight and a half point favorites here. Total is 52 and a half. We've seen the Jags surprise a lot of times this year in the second half of the season. Can they keep it rolling and cover eight and a half points against the Chiefs? I think that they can. Um, you're looking at, you know, Coach Doug Peterson, man. Uh, you know, why, why, why have we doubt what we didn't doubt him, Jim? But I mean, why did we even <laughs> doubt him when the team went down? Because right. now we're looking at, you know, this this guy has an amazing postseason uh, against the spread record. Um, he's six and zero against the spread as an underdog in the postseason, which is absolutely incredible. Obviously, that Philly run, um, you know, contributes itself to that. And then you have a Chiefs team where. I think they are able to handle business at home. And obviously, you know, Vegas is like, we think that too. That's why um, we see this, uh, the money line where, where it is. And, and the Jaguars, we take about the money line, it's plus 380. Uh, but they've had the worst against the spread record all season in the AFC. They're 5-11-1, and one, um, their record to cover. And we know that the Jaguars played there uh, already and they were able to push at 10. Um, this is eight and a half. But we know that, you know, Things get different in the postseason. I mean, the stops are going to be out. They're going to be trying everything that they can do. You know, maybe Doug Peterson gambles a little bit, um, is able to go for it, you know, instead of letting Riley Patterson come out and kick field goals. Lawrence, uh, I think, you know, he couldn't have a worse game uh, in his first playoff stint. So now, I mean, yes, he's traveling into Arrowhead, tough place to play. But, I mean, if there's any adversity that you could overcome, it was last week. So I think that this, this team goes in there and just plays loose. And that's the scariest thing for uh, a Kansas City Chiefs team is like somebody who's out there and just willing to lose. And, you know, it, it, this really becomes coaching matchups. And I think that you got, you know, one of the best matchups on the slate with Peterson going against Andy Reid. So I'm, I'm willing to just lay the uh, get the eight and a half there at minus 105 on the FanDuel Sportsbook. That seems amazing. Um, Jim, maybe you have a read on wanting to take the Jaguars at plus 380. And I would love that if you did. Well, yeah. Uh, you read my mind. Um, I haven't done it yet. Um, I do show value though. Right now, uh, this is the implied odds of plus three eighty or twenty point eight three percent. My model gives the Jags a twenty three point nine five percent chance to win this game, which does cross my threshold where I I, I would bet it. I have not because I'm a scaredy cat. Um, we've talked about this before, but my model has shown value in the Jags money line ten separate times this year. They are nine and one straight up in those games. So they have cashed the money line in nine of those games. But one loss was against the Chiefs. Uh, it was plus 360 at the time in that game. I think it closed at four to one. Um, and they did lose, as you mentioned, by 10. So it's a revenge game for the model against the Chiefs. Uh, we can say that. I've not taken it yet because. A, the Chiefs do have had their bye. Uh, that's that's an important thing at this point in the year. Uh, maybe they get an extra bump with the rest maybe mattering more at this point in the year. I think we could see them put their foot on the gas more than they have throughout this season um, because they we've talked about this before. They kind of play with their food a bit, and they won't be doing that yep. here. And also, I think they're kind of a bad matchup for the Jags in that they're going to be able to throw the football on them, and that's a concern. And I also think Kadarius Tony is going to get like full Tony role in this game. So I haven't taken it yet, Ryan, but I have my like my finger on the button. I have enough value where I would take it. I If it were to get to like four to one on Saturday morning, I'd have a really hard time saying no. Um, <laughs> but it, it is in my value threshold now. So the odds I wind up taking it, by saturday are decently high i haven't done it yet though and i want to be transparent in that so not there yet but i'm very close and i would also say i'd rather personally go with the money line over the spread in this one because i could see the chiefs lay in the hammer i could see a 20 point win in this game things things snowballing and it's a volatile handicap in that regard so i'd rather go with the higher upside market in the jags money line versus the spread i think the eight and a half is a big number and you're getting a lot of leeway by taking the eight and a half um 
I think I just I see a lot of scenarios in which the Chiefs just blow them out, and that's why I'd rather go with the the option that rewards me more if I'm right in that this game remains close. I think that's the way I view it, at least personally. Yeah. No, and I mean, listen, um, you know, this, I hate to put it in this slide, but I am. I, this game has, whatever year that was, uh, Chiefs, Texans vibes to me. 24 uh, nothing. Okay, so yeah, 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 we get the, I take the Jags plus 380, wait till they're 24 nothing, and then bet the Chiefs money line, which by that point will probably be like, Minus 110, given the way sports books right. tend to handle uh, Chiefs <laughs> live lines. I think they'll be minus 110 if they're down 24 nothing. Absolutely. Although crazy money could be coming in. Uh, well, yeah, the Sharps will bet the Chiefs. But I think yeah. casuals who are watching, like crazy money will start oh, to come in done. on the Jags money line just as much as they're getting up on the Chiefs because people right. are always just like, oh, my gosh, can this be the time that the Chiefs lose? Right. So, you so take the Jags now. Money. And then take the Chiefs when it's 24 nothing. Jags are up. Right. Yeah, I, I think that makes a lot of sense. Okay. Yep. Let's move now to the Saturday night game. That's the Giants at the Eagles. Eagles here are seven and a half point favorites. Total is 48 and a half. And we can toss that week 18 for these two teams, I think. Not a lot to learn there because it was Davis Webb starting for the Giants. But the first regular season game, the Eagles offense went scorched earth. They were pretty pass heavy in the first half. Second half, it was a Miles Sanders track meet, basically. Can the Giants keep them keep them in check here and cover again a a spread of more than a touchdown? This is one that I've battled with um, so far on my card. I I really I think at the end of the day I'm going to end up taking the Eagles minus seven and a half here. Mm -hmm. um, they smacked this team earlier on in the season, um, forty eight to twenty two, um, as road favorites. And then, you know, when they kind of played them later on in the season, there were things that were kind of banged up. And, you know, the, the game just wasn't from a full strength standpoint. I think with the given the bye, um, given how Sirianni has coached these guys all year, given, you know, kind of what the Eagles have done all year leading up to this point. I know they kind of struggled towards the end, as we were talking about earlier, but they were dealing with some injuries and they were, you know, Hurts not playing is the key one. Offensive line not being healthy, the second one. Um, and I think, you know, they they definitely got a lot to prove. I mean, Hurts especially, you know, coming into this year, I think it would be, you know, remiss if he just kind of laid an egg and weren't, wasn't able to handle business here with them doing everything they do to get the one seed. I mean, MVP running, you're talking about there. Um, the thing about the Giants, though, is that they, you know, are riding this five game against the spread streak that they've been on. They're kind of, you know, hitting the strides at the right time. But it's it's still to me just can Daniel Jones do it? I mean, it, you know, it was one thing to handle business in Minnesota, um, which, you know, I, I took the three there. It, it, it was a trap. But the way that that defense had been playing all year, you know, especially how easily things came to them, especially for Daniel Jones on the run, like knowing that they just had that situation and now have to face against a divisional opponent, like maybe this gets a little bit uglier for them. I know that, you know, eight always feels like a lot when we're talking about, you know, this time of the season and, and playoffs. But I think if there's any team that can, if, if there's one team that can do it in the NFC, it's the number one seed there having a home playoff game. Yeah, I think that the Eagles are a team you can feel good about as heavy favorites in large part because you know if they get a lead, they can close it out because of how good their rushing offense is, aided by Jalen Hurts. And um, I think that that's a lot of what we saw in that first matchup. Second matchup, as you mentioned, Hurts coming off the shoulder injury. Lane Johnson didn't play. Lane Johnson expected to go, not be 100% this week, but still go in this one at right tackle. And he's a big difference maker on that team. The one market I have the most interest here in is the total. I have this at 49.2. So at 48 mm -hmm. and a half, not quite there yet, uh, but it is minus 115 on the under right now, which implies we could see this inch down. If it gets down to 48, I'd have interest. 47 and a half, I'd have a bit more interest. If it gets to 47 somehow, I don't think it will. That's that's a lot of movement at this point in the year. But we've seen some like day of spread movement that are in total movement that's pretty big. If it hits 47 and I can get a push on a key number of 47, I would take that. So I will have a close eye on the total in this game. I think that the Eagles offense will score points. I think the Giants very well could. And that to me is a good blend to potentially get an over. So as of now, I'm seeing nothing in this game, but I do want to keep a close eye on the total here. It hasn't come down yet. I've been having my eye on this one since Tuesday, uh, but it hasn't moved yet. So 
I doubt we get there, but it is the market I am most likely to bet in this game. Uh, my numbers are the Eagles by 6.7 or 7.2 points, depending on the model. So I'll stay away from the spread, but I think that I agree with your thought process on if the Eagles get a lead, they can maintain. I also think that their passing offense is good enough to make up a deficit if they were to climb their uh, climb their way into a hole. So I think that uh, makes sense as well. Let's go now to the Sunday games. Talk about the Bengals at the Bills. Bills now five and a half point favorites. Total is 48 and a half. And the reason the spread is five and a half is because the Bengals offensive line is super banged up. Ryan, are they banged up enough to scare you out of betting the Bengals here? Dude, I mean, it, it doesn't feel great, man, right? Like left tackle Jonah Williams, uh, Alex Kappa, right tackle Lyle Collins. Like, I mean, that's tough. That That is tough. I think the, the biggest thing, and, and maybe this changes, right, when, when these two teams meet up, is that the, the Bills have a hard time getting pressure on the quarterback. Um, and that's nothing, that's the eye test. That's nothing, you know, I'm not looking at numbers in relation to it, but, you know, just seeing these, seeing these games and they've had a lot of Island games this year. Um, that's, that's just not what their defense is. I, you know, you love everything that the secondary can do. Um, and they're kind of just, they're just good in between the twenties, like, you know, not really kind of giving up those, those, necessarily big plays but definitely you know hunkering down in the red zone defense but I think you know Joe Burrow probably has enough going for him on the offensive side you know love to see T Higgins get going last week you know Jamar Chase is always going to get his that'll be a fun matchup uh, considering what they do with Trey White on the other side um, but you know they they've just been so good at covering um all year in these situations you're looking at you know a Bengals team on the road that's actually six and three uh outright and then 70 seven and two against the spread um, on the road thus far this season. So I think if there's anybody that we can trust um, to kind of keep the spread covered, it, it's Joe Burrow. You love that this this line has kind of changed, right? Over the course yeah. of time, you're looking at it now um, at five and a half on the FanDuel Sportsbook, if I'm looking correctly. And that feels like a pretty decent sized number. You know, I think that uh, somewhere along the lines, it might have been four at some point, And that was kind of dicey. Um, the other factor, though, Jim, which I, you know, I just haven't gotten to that point yet, is that the fact that this is a rematch from that week 17 matchup, our emotions high a little bit in, in, in this yeah. game, at least to start. Um, and that could, you know, I'm not sure. Does that affect the Bills more? Does that affect the Bengals more? Uh, you know, we love that the Bills are going to be at home and um, everything that's going on with them. But they they've struggled, you know, when you're talking about, you know, covering spreads, but they're usually not in the four or five range. Um, so I don't really have a read against this. I do like taking um the over here, I just think that these are two teams that just want to put up points in 48 and a half, you know, seems reasonable. It hasn't gotten to 50 yet, which you would normally think that you would see considering these two offenses there um, where things could happen. But, you know, I, that's that's kind of my read at this point in time. I would probably take the Bengals plus five and a half. But, you know, it's if it was any lead. lower than that, yeah. I might consider taking the Bills. Yeah, uh, with the total, it was 15 and a half on Tuesday, then shot down because the weather looked bad um, at the time. Yeah. There were 14 mile per hour winds. Those are down to four now. So I took under 50 and a half. And now I'm like, uh oh, we're getting pretty close to my numbers are at add value at 48 and a half. So I'm like, did I did I make a bad bet based on a bad forecast on a Tuesday? <laughs> Oops. Um, it's still I do think that under 50 and a half if that were still available i don't think that'd be a bad bet but i think over 48 and a half i understand the thought process there for you you were talking about the bills pass rush especially since the von miller injury they yeah. were early in the year able to get pressure while rushing only four that's why they were able to just torch the uh the rams in week one is because they didn't need to blitz and they were generating pressure but if you look at the games uh, since von miller got hurt von miller got hurt on thanksgiving against uh, against detroit their pass defense has still been good, but it hasn't been great. Um, they are a little bit, um, you know, a little bit. Uh, they're basically average in that time. Uh, their rush defense in that time is still very good. So that aspect of it, I'd expect to remain intact. And that, that's a good thing for sure. But I agree their defense has taken a hit recently. And that's part of why I'm here. But also... 
I kind of think the Bengals offense is better when they're fully healthy, which they're not right now. But I think the, the thing that encourages me, which is why I like the Bengals plus five and a half, is you look at their games this year. How many games do they have where they were fully healthy, where they had Lyle mm-hmm. Collins, where they had Alex Kappa, Jonah Williams, Jamar Chase, T. Higgins? Right. It's not a big sample. They've been playing banged up for most of this year, and they've still been a disgustingly efficient offense. So I have a downgrade for Jonah Williams in my model, and I sell the Bills by 1.8 in my good model and 3.1 in my alternate model. So yeah. either way, it says there's value on the Bengals here. And five and a half is a lot. I prefer the money line again, because if I'm going to be right, I'd rather be really right. <laughs> um, it's two to one right now, uh, plus 200 yeah. for the Bengals. But I would also take the spread here. So with the Jags, it was only money line, no spread. Here, I would take, I'd take. be willing to take either because I think the Bengals, if they fall down, can claw their way back. And I don't have a lot of faith in the Bills' ability to run the ball effectively and, and drain clock, kill this game if they get a big lead. So that's why I think Bill or Bengals plus five and a half, Bengals money line, both those still good values to me, despite the fact the market has disagreed so far this week. Yep. I, I, I like where your head's at. Um, you know, they, they, we keep doubting Burrow and we using it as a universal thing. Right, and, you us. know, here they are right again, just trying to, you know, get to the AFC championship. I mean, it's actually incredible um, what they've been able to do despite all the things that have been going on with this team. So, you know, uh, they, one more time, this is, this is obviously, I think, the, the marquee matchup yeah. on the slate, um, both from, you know, a casual perspective and a fan perspective, just with everything um, that this game means. So right. I think that this is just a fun one to just kind of sit back and relax and, and take in. But yeah, I do. I do like the over um, the most in this game. Yeah, couldn't agree more. This game is most most exciting game of the weekend. Let's move now to the Sunday night game. Talk about the Cowboys at the 49ers. Uh, 49ers are three and a half point favorites here. Total is 45 and a half. And I talked about this on Tuesday and I was like, OK, um, you know, I think if we were to see this one move towards the 49ers, if it can extend more, I could see myself buying into the Cowboys. But instead, the market moved in favor of the Cowboys, it went from minus four to minus three back to three and a half again. So people have faith in the Cowboys. I'm surprised by that. Personally, I think it's correct. I am surprised by it, but I I do think it's, um, I do think it's the correct way. I've got this right between four and three at a a 4.2 for one model, 3.1 for the other. So I'm not seeing much here. Anything for you, Ryan, sitting out in this game. Yeah. I mean, you're looking at it just with the, percent of the bets um 66 percent of the bets are coming in on the 49ers 30 34 on the cowboys but uh percent of the money uh 58 on the cowboys 42 percent on the 49ers which means a lot of the sharps are are feeling that that uh cowboys side of things and you know i think while the line is correct i mean it just it just feels low to me um to be honest with you, I mean, I, I, I get last week and I, you know, I was on, I was on Tampa, you know, this, the Cowboys were able to win that first road playoff game since 93. So 20 year or 30 years, excuse me, shout out to them. Um, but you know, all the emotions, I think, you know, going into that game and what that meant to even advance the next round. And now you're seeing a matchup and Jim dare, dare I say that like this 49ers team, which these teams just played last year, um in Mm -hmm. in the wild card round i believe but like that 49ers team this team might be better than that team i mean it it probably i think they definitely are absolutely yeah Yeah. right right i mean yes they they are better i mean look at the weapons that they have um that they're able to throw in even with purdy and the way that purdy's been playing is absolutely just you know fantastic and this is a team where like you know the thing that really helped the cowboys last week was the defense like being able to get you know, get the offense off the field, put the Cowboys offense back on the field, get them short fields, uh, the turnovers, like those things. And that, that's just not how the 49ers are coached and play. Like this is just going to be a grinded out game. And, and for any reason, like with Dak looking as impressive as he was last week, like do the 49ers just decide like, hey, we're just going to elongate drives as much as we can. Time of possession is key. Don't let Dak get the ball, you know, against us. And if he does, we're going to make his life miserable. But we're already going to look to put up, you know, points on this team. I mean, this team 
before Brock Purdy came into the mix, like this team was averaging like just over 20 points a game. And now this team, you know, all they do is score 30 points for, you know, at nauseum. And, you know, that's that's tough for the Cowboys because they really, you know, pride themselves on being able to outscore opponents both from an offense and defensive standpoint. So uh, and also the the, you know, big elephant in the room with the Cowboys team in general is like, are you going to be able to settle for field goals knowing what Brett Maher just went through uh, <laughs> yeah. last week? And I know they signed, is it Viscano um, to the practice squad? Tristan or? Viscaino? I actually hadn't Viscaino. seen it, but I, yeah. I love his name. So I hope it's yeah. him. And so, you know, maybe that helps. But I think that's, you know, that's a huge caveat. And Brett Maher has been money you know like everybody who's just watching the cowboys for the first time last week is like oh who's who's this guy who's this kicker he should be you know he should be cut they should leave him in tampa it's like no brett mar is like one of the most accurate kickers like in the yeah, league good. and it just you know just one of those anomaly things i don't know how much it's going to linger to him because we haven't seen this from him before but if the a long story short if they're not able to get in a position where they're kicking threes against this team and at least getting points on the scoreboard that is going to be tough for the Cowboys. So I'm willing to go 49ers here minus three and a half knowing it's a home playoff game. I mean, they got their eye on the class. They're looking ahead. They want, they want to get Philly, but you know, that's hasn't stopped them before to, to be able to handle business um, on the road there. So I think this is just an incredible, um, incredible matchup and probably a, a, an incredible line to get the 49ers on. If you, if you are willing to, you know, put your money there. Yeah, I think I think it'll stick at three and a half based on the way it's moved so far. I think we see it stick at three and a half right now. I think the most interesting bet for me in this game is actually we'll have a full prop show tomorrow. But if you go to the rushing plus receiving market, Christian McCaffrey's is at 105 and a half, which is a lot. That's a big number for running back. Yeah. It's a big number. And I don't want to disregard that. However, in last week's game, he had a 90 percent snap rate in the first half. And wound up at 73.4. So, like, he's playing a lot of snaps. If you look at the games from McCaffrey with a snap rate of at least, you know, two-thirds of the snaps, here are his uh, rushing plus receiving totals. 149, 146, 153, 138, 58, 193, 136. And we're going to put him down at 105.5? For this that's, i know it's big i know it's big yeah. we're betting on that outlier but also i don't think it's big enough um right i think that's an awesome bet mccaffrey over 105 and a half rushing plus receiving yards because i mean when they want to use this guy they use him aggressively i feel like they're right. gonna have to use him aggressively in this game because the cowboys will be competitive here so I don't think they can serve, can serve him. I think we see get we see full McCaffrey and full McCaffrey typically is almost like he's obliterating this number. So to me, I think that's the best bet in this game is McCaffrey over 105 and a half uh, rushing plus receiving yards. I think that is a tremendous option. We'll talk again, full props tomorrow, but um, I just feel like that's way too low for the way they've used him recently when they needed to. Yeah. And you know, uh, there's a lot of conversation that's had in the community and for just the average fan about like running backs and like how valuable they are or what you do. Like to me, this is, I don't know what trade, but like, this is one of the biggest <laughs> trades that a team has made right. um, on, on, you know, their, their road to be able to host the Lombardi and in, in a long time. I mean, this yeah. is absolutely a piece that just made sense for the San Francisco 49ers offense and just adds another dynamic piece. And and we, we see that, right? Like when you have, when you surround the quarterback with weapons, like it maybe you know, maybe it is a Shanahan system quarterback thing where it's like, it doesn't matter if it's Lance or Garoppolo or Purdy, like we we just have a system in place and, you know, just give us a guy. I don't want to slight anything that Purdy's been doing um, because it has been incredible. But, you know, mm -hmm. he he's going on. He's going about it on, on an incredible run. So that is what it is. But for me, McCaffrey, like what they gave up to be able to get this guy and how integral of a piece he's going to be um, for every win that they have on this postseason run and has been uh, thus far. It, it's just absolutely incredible. And I think that it just shows value. And when you have everything put in place, like just to get that last piece in makes a ton of difference. So, uh, yeah, I'm with you like that number definitely feels low. But I mean, if there's if there's any sense of a competitive game here, like, we, you know, Eli Mitchell is going to be involved, but yeah. like he this is Christian McCaffrey's show. Yeah, Eli Mitchell deserves to be involved. Um, so that would make sense there. I think that the with McCaffrey and like the running back value debate, a running back has value if they improve your passing offense, and he does. So yeah. like 
I, I think that that's, it, it can sometimes be very overly simplified to say running backs don't matter. It's like they do matter if they affect your passing offense. And he does yeah. very clearly. So I think that he's an actual piece. He's a weapon. He's not a running back. He's a weapon. Um, we've seen that throughout the course of this year. All right. That is all four games for this divisional round. We have broken them down. I think that they're going to be a delight. Again, not a lot on the board for me so far, but I'm okay with that. Um, kind of know how things go this time of year. Daytona 500 just around the corner, so I can I can uh, rest peacefully. But I think it's a fun slate, Ryan. Any final thoughts for you before we uh, close up shop for today? No, a fun slate, guys. Have have at it. Have fun. I think you know if you thought wild card weekend was 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 fun and, and a fun ride, uh, just wait for the divisional round because there's going to be things that that happen here that are just going to be able to you know put a, put us put us upside down there and make us do a 180. What just happened? So uh, this is one of my this is the fun fun week for me. Um, I'm excited to get after it, get your bets in, and uh, yeah, we'll catch you guys next time. I can't handle a second wild card round. I my heart. <laughs> Ask for it to chill out a little bit. Prepare, like, just, yeah, let's just calm down a little bit. I don't, I don't want any of that like full duplicate, but um, that is Ryan Williams. Check him out on Twitter <laughs> at Ryan Alexander underscore W. I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J I M S A N N E S. I want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Back once again tomorrow with Tom Vecchio to break down his favorite props across Wild Card Weekend. We'll talk to you then. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 